to talk today about a tough topic life with a mother who couldn't love me and so if any of you have experienced you know a parent or any kind of relationship where you felt that person just didn't have the ability to love back mm -hmm. um, Phyllis has lived through that and she's come out on the other side and now she helps people kind of survive those situations and find your own worth and identity mm -hmm. and it's just an amazing story um, so Phyllis go ahead and talk to him and just explain maybe a little bit about your story and how the book came about right so I grew up in a very dysfunctional alcoholic family. Um, my mom was suspected bipolar in 1965. They didn't even have a name for that yeah, then. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I realized quickly on that the alcohol soothed her um, oh. mental, like, stressness. Yeah. But um, ironically, she never had alcohol in the house. So this is a funny thing about, I do want to mention about people who are, can be alcoholics. It, there's so many different realms to that mm -hmm. and so my mom would go out several times a week mm -hmm. and because she didn't have alcohol in the house she would always say I can't be an alcoholic I don't have it in the house yeah. but she craved it mm -hmm. so um, we grew up in a very violent um, mm -hmm. abusive home and um, there were good days and bad days and we just never knew who we were gonna get when we came home and the tipping point was when I was eight years old and we came home to um, a moving van in front of our house and two men carrying our couch out. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't know was that um, my mom had been having an affair and she found out she was pregnant. My dad was a long distance truck driver and so he wasn't home at the time. And she panicked and was leaving to go live with this person and she took us kids with her, my brother and I. And so my father came home to an empty house and no family. And I, my whole life changed at eight. Yeah. And shortly thereafter, my sister was born. But my mom continued to be in abusive relationships and um, treat us abusively. And so we grew up learning that that was our normal. Yeah. But we could see it wasn't because we'd go to other people's houses and yeah. say, why are they so nice to each other? <laughs> So it was very difficult, um, and one of the things that I learned is that until you can really recognize that in yourself, mm -hmm. even if you know it's not right, you will repeat those lessons, mm -hmm. and that's what happened is I ended up repeating those bad habits mm -hmm. and um, was doing all the wrong things in my life in my 20s, and it took the loss of a child and a failed mm -hmm. marriage to realize that I needed to really work on me. Yeah. I think I was also looking for men to save me. Um, be, I was a daddy's girl, but my dad was not around. Uh, yeah. He was in and out of my life. Yeah. And so um, I craved that attention. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and I think you see that sometimes just so many that work so hard and mm -hmm. um, yeah. So if you would, I'm just wondering like, you know, there were triggers that sometimes you would come home and you're like, okay, we're going to have a good day today or we're not. So did that follow you into adulthood where, not that it's PTSD, but that you would have triggers of... That's so good that you, yeah, you definitely come away with trauma. I have triggers to this day. Yeah. I have a really hard time with people um, getting too close to me uh -huh. because I've had situations where my mom would bring people home and it was not a good yeah. situation. And so, um, yeah, you definitely walk away with those things again have to recognize um, I have a wonderful husband who knows there's certain things I really don't like <laughs> I'm like yeah. it's it's a definite no <laughs> and yeah. sometimes he'll tease me like I don't like people touching my feet I don't know why but I and he he tries to tease me 30 years later he, he's like come on don't. I go don't you dare or just like someone breathing near my neck kind oh, of thing. Wow. There's just certain things. And so when you recognize those things, you have to speak out on those things and let people know it's it's okay to walk away with those traumas, yeah. but you have to know where to deal and place them. You don't want them to take over your life. Yeah. And so I've learned um, that there are hard no's in my life that yeah. I don't like that situation or I don't like being over here, or whatever it is. Yeah. And, um, and then it just surrounds my world with peace. You know, if I surround myself with like, I'm a very probably sanguine person. I, I, I have to have beauty around me you know oh, I have to have flowers yeah. and I have to smell things that are nice and yeah. that just brings me a lot of joy 
So. And that's great, like to know yourself mm -hmm. and, and and it's totally okay to mm -hmm. do that. You're not being selfish, like you no. are taking care of yourself. It is self-care, yeah. yeah. And I think that is one of the things uh, I would say um, to anyone that has gone through that kind of trauma is take care of you and, and treat yourself well because you deserve it. And, um, you know, we had talked earlier, I think because of the smells, I love good smelling things. When my mom was baking chocolate chip cookies, I knew it was going to be a good day. Mm -hmm. So the smell of food brings me joy. So mm -hmm. I love to cook. So as a mama mentor now, I often invite these girls to my home, which is a beautiful, safe home that has mm -hmm. lots of beauty around it. And God has told me it's not just for you, it's for others. Mm -hmm. And so I bring them in, I make them a meal, and then we talk. And they often stay longer than they're supposed to <laughs> because they say, it's so peaceful here, I just yeah. want to stay here. And I said that this house is blessed, like it, yeah. this is what it's for. So um, God's allowed me to have beauty around me, but he's told me it needs to be shared. So you mentioned too about the mama mentor. So mm -hmm. explain to them like, how you have taken this to oh be, my gosh we well, talked about your mess to your message yeah. it's, it's you now your message so it was um i call it a coincidence god <laughs> <laughs> it was organically started this is how the book came about so i started becoming a co-leader um, for different women's ministries and every time i would share a part of my story you know at the end of the night you go to the little coffee bar and you're getting your coffee and i turn around <laughs> and there's a young little girl and she's like um phyllis <laughs> can I talk to you? Can we meet for coffee or dinner or something? I'm having this struggle with my mom. And, she, or they would say something you said just really struck me. And I realized no one was talking about these mommy issues and these girls are growing up and repeating the same bad mistakes. And so I would meet these girls for coffee or dinner mm -hmm. and we would have this conversation, but it started growing. <laughs> <laughs> where it became a ministry and I it wasn't something I wanted to do and God just was like you could write a book and you could go out and spread it to the world because yeah. there is a lot of need especially now I think because moms are busy there's a lot of broken families so moms are working which yeah. means the kids are at home alone which means trouble abounds you know like they're stressed they're disconnected yeah. um, there was something, Dr. Phil had said the most important person in your life is the same sex parent. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, that's true if the parent is good. Mm -hmm. But if the parent isn't good, then what happens? That's the most important person in your life and you can't depend on them. Yeah. So what happens to that girl? Yeah. And that's what bothered me is that's what hap that happened to us yeah. is that my I craved my mom's love and it wasn't that she didn't want to she just couldn't mm -hmm. and so i grew up just really looking at different i had mentors mm -hmm. i remember women in my life coming alongside mm -hmm. me and guiding me and i thought i need that so bad and i feel like that's what's made me the woman i am today and so for me it was like a give back a pay it forward mm -hmm. And if I recall, on your website, you have resources um, and information for the women. I do. I We do have, uh, if you sign up for the email, we have the five steps for setting boundaries, which is really mm -hmm. important if you have a parent that's toxic. You, My main goal is to teach the young girls that you need to create the family you deserve and desire that God has mm -hmm. for you, which does not include the family members that are toxic. And this is a thing I tell them, you would never let a stranger come in and talk to you or treat you the way you let family members treat you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we forget that and we think that because they're family, they're allowed to treat you that way. And I'm here to say they are not. Mm -hmm. And so I have had to create a big barrier to protect my family where some family members are toxic. It doesn't mean I don't love them. It means I may have to meet them somewhere else. And I actually had to do that with my mom because I tried to bring her into my beautiful life and she would stir the pot. Yeah. And so I said, mm, we're not raising my kids that way. We don't deal with stress that way. How about I come see you yeah. on a different day? Yeah. So she had to be removed from certain yeah. situations, it actually stressed her out more to be in those situations, I found. Yeah. So it was almost a relief for her. Yeah. 
So those are things I, I kind of go through five steps to sh teach them about setting boundaries with a difficult mm -hmm. parent. And really it could be for any, it could be for any relative. Yeah. 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 So, and we'll be adding more content on there for that kind oh, of thing great. too. So you, you mentioned that you still see your mother and I read that you have totally forgiven your mother. So any tips like for people to kind of at least start going in that direction? Cause that's, right. that's tough. Well, so my mom passed away in oh, 2007. Goodness. So um, it shows the journey of taking care of her. So she actually got hurt. She broke a hip and the hospital called me out of three kids. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> but um, that was another God tap where he was like, you have to honor this parent, but we can do it with boundaries and yeah. different rules and things. And so for 16 years, I took care of her wow. and she had, I was raising my girls and she had these different ailments and issues and things still. And then she got dementia. Oh. And so we ended up having to put her in a nursing home for the last 10 months. And I got therapy there from the therapist. She brought me in one day and said, stop micromanaging. Like oh. you can let her go, go live your life. It's good. And I just burst into <laughs> tears. And I think here's the thing if I can it's it is difficult to love someone that isn't lovable but one of the things that I want to remind people is that um, my girls watched me love on someone who was very difficult and be very gracious and also firm in different things and they have grown up to have a really good heart mm. and they take good care of their mama <laughs> which brings me great joy mm -hmm. and um, my oldest has made me a grandma oh. which is beautiful <laughs> and so I feel like um, there is a, unless the parent is really really dangerous mm -hmm. you have to find a place to just love them where they are mm -hmm. um, one of the things I will say when I I think we need to take our parents off a pedestal of being perfect and look at them as a person because one of the things I discovered is that my mom was unmothered. Oh. She got taken away from her mom at nine. Oh, wow. So there was a generational history. Yeah. And when I could understand that, yeah. then I said, oh, I have to break that chain. Yeah. I have to break that off. This is a repeat. Yeah. So really try to go back through your ancestry and see why it, why are they the way they are and look at them as a whole person, mm -hmm. not just as your parent. Mm -hmm. And I think when you can do that, you can find a place of love of, she was very damaged already, yeah. way before she became a mom. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I just think of that as just a most sacred relationship and so many women just have not had it. You yeah. Know? I think I've totally forgotten to share your book. <laughs> we get to talk. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, you know, the story is just amazing. I mean, just in these few minutes, you've heard what she's sharing, and the book is chock full of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Unmothered, Living with a Mom Who Couldn't Love Me. And um, I, I just highly recommend it. Just in the conversations we've had, she has such a heart, you guys, for helping you. And um, it's, you know, we it's called, I think, a memoir by some people, but it's her sharing her pain just so that she can help you through yours and to come out on the other side and mm -hmm. to know that there is that hope out there for that. So anything you would want to leave the listeners as we close out? Um, I just want to probably let them know if you are suffering through this kind of relationship is to just hang on to hope and really know that... Um, go get help if you need help too. I think that's the biggest thing is don't be, um, don't try to suck it up and do it on your own. Um, my church family gathered around me. I had lots of friends that were therapists, so I was getting <laughs> free therapy and I didn't even know it. And I think um, you have to like get that stuff out. Please don't hold it in. Don't mm -hmm. keep it a secret. I think uh, Satan loves secrets. And he wants you to hold it like a gift in a little box because he's like, oh, if people really knew who you were, oh, no one's going to love you. Yeah. But the opposite is completely yeah. true because as soon as I opened it up, God just burst the doors open. Yeah. So please, like, yeah. open your life up, 
get the help you need. That's the best advice I could get. Mm -hmm. And um, share your story and pay it forward. Yeah, oh, very good point. Thank you guys for watching. We will have links to her book and her website. Um, and she also has a Facebook page and a group. You're more than welcome to join all of that. And just a great community of women um, who can walk beside you. Thank you guys. Bye.